How's everybody doing today? Uh, it's a warm day, so I got my fan on. It's probably 11 o'clock in the morning right now, Saturday, June the 27th. Uh, it's probably close to about 86, 87 degrees out. It's overcast, it's getting ready to rain. The humidity's like sky high. I mean, just sitting still, you're sweating. Remember, you know, I'm in Ohio. So, you know, the humidity here is just terrible. Especially before it rains. But anyway, what we got here, right here on the bench, this is the engine that's upside down off of that lawn boy. Um, I had it running. I just couldn't make it idle the way I wanted it to idle. It just wouldn't idle right. So I took the engine off and done a little investigation. And I'll show you what I found. This is the bottom seal. There's the garter ring. It was out of it when I pulled the seal. And there's how I found it. Here on the top, you can see part of it missing. Tremendous air leak. So, I called my parts guy. I looked up the, the numbers for the seals. Called my parts guy. No longer available. So I asked a couple other guys. They couldn't really give me any information either other than part numbers. So I started digging around. Hang on just a second. So, I remember one other time for a McCollum Mac 3200 I needed crank seals and couldn't find them. And I had run across this place in California called AVX Seals. Okay, so I called them up, give them the measurements of the seals that I had, and the guy says, well, this isn't exact. He says, it's just like a, just a smidge bigger. He said, but because they're rubber clad on the outside of the, of the seal race, the metal seal race, because they're rubber clad, he said, you shouldn't have no problem getting them down in there. The inside bore was the same diameter. It was just the outside bore that we was dealing with. So I went ahead and bought them. They were uh, $3 and change, like $3.50 a piece. Okay. I can't show them because I got the pulley on. I got the, the flywheel on. I did get them installed. They installed great. Snug. Went down over the shaft with just a little resistance. So, I'll post the address and the seal number that I ordered in the, at the conclusion of this video. So if anybody else needs crank seals for a Lawn Boy 2 cycle, um, they are pretty much the same across the entire run of the Lawn Boy 2 cycles. Uh, I'll post this information if you need them then you know where to get them. Uh, so that brings us to right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressure test this just to make sure. I'm, I'm sure it's going to hold. Fingers crossed. So what I've done, I didn't have any rubber that was white enough to cover the exhaust. So what you're looking at right here is nothing more than just a roll of white duct tape. This just happens to be the Gorilla Strong brand. Four piece off. I, of course, I cleaned the ceiling surface off with some brake clean to get the oil off of it so it would stick. Um, I just took my X-Acto knife and I cut out the, the holes for the bolt to go through. We're actually going to mount the bottom plate up to seal around that because the muffler, this, this is like a two piece muffler on these things if you've never seen one. This is the muffler itself but it's like the outer shell that bolts onto this base plate and then it creates the whole housing. And when it bolts down to the block, this is the part of the muffler on the chainsaw that would bolt up against the cylinder. And I've done the same thing with the carburetor for the intake side. Just took a piece, put on there and cut out the bolt holes to block that off. 
So, we'll set this on here. Tighten this down. Remember, it doesn't have to be, you know, Paul Bunyan tight, just good and snug. I'm going to have to chase these threads a little bit and clean them out. That should be plenty there. I probably should have put the carburetor on first. That would have probably been the easiest way to have done it. Now there is a gasket and a spacer plate that goes on behind this. It's a heat shield. I'm, I'm not going to use that. I don't think it's necessary. I'm just doing a compression test. Or not a compression test, but a, a pressure vacuum test. Should be able to do it. what I'm doing right here. I hope the audio is good in this. Okay, I've seen that tape actually pull a little bit, kind of wrinkle around. So that tells me that I've got it. Should have a good seal there. I've got the piston at bottom dead center to open up the transfers for the crankcase so that when I pressurize it, it's actually going to pressurize the crankcase also. That way we can test the seals. I have no idea what's going to happen here, guys. So you're going to, you're going to see with me whether these seals work or if there's actually a different issue with this block. Got it set on pressure. And it is not building pressure. So somewhere there's a leak. So I'm not going to bore you guys with finding the leak, but when I find it, I'll come back and I'll show you what I found. Okay, what I've done, took my air hose off my air compressor, took the hook up for my um, compression tester, took the Schrader valve out of it, I turned my regulator clear down to 10 PSI, I relieved all the pressure off the hose before I hooked it up, I have found the leak, I'm going to try to attempt to show you where it's at, so let's zoom in here. Sorry about that guys. Right there is the back of the carburetor, the bottom side of it. What you're looking at right there is the bowl. There you go, see all them bubbles? That's our air leak. Okay. I'm not going to bore you with trying to fix that. There is a gasket on there. It was attached fairly well. I didn't want to tear it. I left it on so I would assume that's what's causing the issue. So I'm going to pause this again. I'll take that apart, take that gasket off, try to save it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I haven't gotten it clear off yet. Um, just kind of wanted to show you the last bit of it, how I do it. I've just got a regular stiff back straight edge razor blade. You can buy a pack of like a hundred from Harbor Freight for like, you know, less than five dollars, I believe it is. But I just get it underneath there. And I just kind of lift up on it a little bit and I'll work it back and forth. And there it is. I don't know 
Don't know why it was leaking. Let me zoom out here. I don't know why it was leaking. Looks like it had a good seal. So, where are we at here? There we are. Try to zoom in here just a little bit more. So, when I put that gasket back on, I'll hit both sides of it with just a little bit of three bomb. There's just a little bit of pull off here. A couple little places I'll clean that up. Like I said, that's got some oil on it. So I'll just take a little bit of brake parts, brake parts cleaner. Just a, a little speck of dirt down on that reed valve. I picked that off there. So now, let's try this again. I did get some parts yesterday, but I didn't get all of them. Okay. try this again. A lot of comments from different people thanking me for putting my issues on film and showing it. So if I can help somebody by having an issue and showing them my fix or how I work through it, then that's a good day. So we'll try it again here. And again, nothing. So, let's go back to where we were. Get my air hose. I still got this on 10 PSI, so we're good. Shut the fan off just a second. It's still leaking. Sounds like it's still coming from up front here. Yep, it is. So, Let me zoom back in here, show you what we've got. There you go, I'll hit that. See them bubbles? See the bubbles forming over? So, that's a plastic base carburetor. Um, I hope that carburetor is not warped. So I'm going to pause this again, and I'm going to try to figure out why that's leaking. I'll be back. 
Okay, this thing's got some other issues. Um, I found at least three. It's leaking underneath the tape there on the exhaust port, but that's not the real issue. The real issue. Uh, hang on here a second. Let me get this. There we go. Try to zoom in here. Where we're looking at. Right in that area right there. That's where the this is a clamshell based engine. See them bubbles? Try to get the light there. See them bubbles? That's coming out of the seal for the reed valve or the reed block. So the front of this engine is going to have to come apart. Also, let's flip it around. <laughs> I've never seen this before, but it doesn't much surprise me. I don't even know if we'll be able to get this one to where you guys can see it or not. Gonna to try to get down in there. Get you around there. Okay, see that bolt? Right down in there. Watch this. Was it that one? That uh, must have been this top one. Well, maybe it was one on the other side. Okay. Anyway, it's leaking around one of them bolts also. Now I had to be on this side. Right there's the bolt. It's not leaking a whole heck of a lot. But it is building some bubbles right there. So I'm going to have to take that apart. So this is going to be... This is going to be a build that going to take a lot longer than what I thought it would because of the issues that I've ran into and uh, I thought I could make a little money on it but obviously now I have to break into the engine like that my, my profits went away okay I'll post this video I'll put the links to the seals in there thanks for watching Hope you all enjoyed. Catch you in the next video. Okay, I'm going to do a little addendum to the video. Uh, when I left, we um, recognized the leak around the clamshell part of it. So I've got it apart now. And um, <laughs> I am um, I'm totally blown away as to what I found. There is nothing left 
Here's the clam. Look, look at the ceiling surface. And this is just as it come off. There's nothing. There, there's a little bit of shellac. Probably some aviation gasket sealer. But it, it's long gone. Here is the You got a little bit of it up there left. You can see a little bit right there around that bolt hole. Some right there. A little bit right there, but for the most part it's all gone. It's honestly I I don't know how it even ran. I'm surprised it even ran at all. I'm um, having that big of a leak. With this seal. Like I said, there's there's the seal that's out of it. That was the bottom seal, and now what I find here with the clamshell. We'll get that all cleaned up. Um, I'll seal it up nice and good with some um, Permatex uh, Black Ultima. That's what I like to use on clamshells. And we'll let that set up for about 24 hours or so, and then we'll come back and we'll do another pressure test. Okay. I, I, I promise you, this is the end of this video. Hope you all enjoyed. See you in the next one.